Tell us what we're going to cook. Oh, uh, we're going to cook a uh, uh, chango hot pot. Okay. It's a uh, sumo restaurant hot pot. Sumo restaurant hot yes. pot. Uh, you're big, but you're not that big <laughs> this way. So how do you know about this? But it's uh, Tadashi and I actually have had the pleasure of going to a sumo uh, stable, as they're called, which are where sumo wrestlers live and train and eat and do everything together um, in a communal way. And then they go and compete. And um, they eat chanko, which are many varieties of chanko. Oh, we're going to get to what chanko means, because that's important. Okay. But um, uh, they eat this chanko hot pot is their kind of lunch. And they, they, the, what we went to visit this one guy, uh, this one place, and the guy who's, he was kind of the best hot pot cook. He was 17 or something like that? Yeah. He was very young. Yeah. He was really young, but he was big, big dude. Big, big. And, um, and uh, they, these guys train in the morning. Then they eat a huge hot pot meal. Then they go to sleep. And then, uh, so, and then they kind of train a little bit, maybe in the evening, and have dinner. Right. But hot pot is a way that they kind of put on the bulk, because part of sumo is to have that kind of root and just be this mass where you're not going to be pushed out of the ring. Um, so now, what does chanko mean, Tadashi? Chang is father. Right. Ko is son. So the idea is, uh, in normally Japanese culture, before, uh, traditionally, the father eats separately. But in the small restaurant house, uh, father and son. Father means like a master. Right. And all these uh, pupil, you know, like eat together. So it's like whole family together. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. That's a chunk for nothing. Right. Food. Also, uh, today we use chicken breast and chicken leg ground beef. And ground beef uh, make it into ball, which is like a Egg or something, they call it a son. Yeah, like a son. Yeah, the the, like symbolic. Father, father or mother, so yeah. we use both parts. So you have that in yes. your hot pot. And, mm. okay, so let's just talk for a second. We were talking about this is a hot pot that's cooked with water. And there's yes. no soup. And it's no just, soup. Yes. Um, you're, but you have something inside the water. Yeah, Tadashi, uh, tell us about uh, that. Things called kombu seaweed. Okay. It comes in dry like this. But it's been sitting in the water for like uh, 30 minutes now. So it stretches and it, uh, it softens. And this stuff gives a lot of uh, nice briny flavor to it. So oh, no. Even just water and kombu gives good, good soup inside. Kombu is, yeah. uh, you know, sometimes I think, I mean, Japan's an interesting place to me on many levels. One of the things is that it was a place that was a world apart from, for centuries, right? It was closed right. to the rest of the world. It's an island, an archipelago that's far away from the rest of Asia. So things develop there that develop nowhere else in the world, in, in a lot of things, and in, in society and in cooking. And this seaweed, which grows into really long fronds, I mean, look at it. It's a piece of, you know, long piece of seaweed. Um, now modern science has found that this seaweed that's used in flavoring is one of the most umami-rich uh, substances in the world. It's loaded with uh, uh, umami, f a flavor compound called glutamate. If we're getting into the chemists here. And when the glutamate meets meat, which has another flavor compound, it creates an even bigger taste. So to have this as kind of a, in the water, and then we're going to cook chicken with it, you're suddenly um, creating a lot of taste for something that's just water, you know? So um, it's a really wonderful, versatile, fundamental Japanese ingredient that we see in a lot of applications. Um, and it's naturally preserved, so it just sits. It could sit for a long, long time. It doesn't go bad, too. OK, Tadashi, sorry. Okay. So are we starting? Please. Because, uh, uh, we're going to make a chicken bowl. Okay. We have ground chicken here. It's about one pound and one whole egg. Chopped scallion, uh, grated ginger, and a uh, tablespoon of miso. And this is a miso that actually we both like a lot. Right. It's um, from a city in the northern part of Japan. It's, uh, it's a really rustic, artisan-made miso. It's called sendai, and it has a lot of, lot of taste, as you'll, you'll right. see when you, you sample this. Um, and you 
eat with your hand really well. Now, a hand's better than a, a food processor, Tadashi? Yes, I, you don't want to cut the pieces, you know, the, the, you don't the mush chicken. It up? Yeah, it mushes up, it hand meat is a perfect uh, equipment, actually, you know, it's just neat until like, yeah, you kind gotta, of sticky. Right, you know, like so it binds. Yeah, it binds really well. That's cool. Yeah. So you'll see, you can look, we have a recipe, everybody has a recipe there. Yeah. And um, you'll, you'll see that, um, you know, the first thing we do is we, we make these, these chicken balls um, as we build the hot pot. Oh, that's one thing to mention, Tadashi, right. that we have like our mantra for hot pot. What build, broth, oh, prep, yeah, yeah, no. That's you, you, right. uh, prep, you broth, build, cook, that's yeah. it. So you want to start having everything prepped out and uh, you know, cut to whatever the pieces are, and then you think about what your broth is. Like if you do one, two, three, four, um, you can start to uh, easily. Yeah. So you go yeah. like this. Now watch this. So you kind of get. You know, it's great to get your hands on it. Tadashi's wearing a glove, but you see, watch this. Show him that move, Tadashi. You kind of like. It's not for the faint of heart. It's a, it, you just go like this. Yeah, you just and you're not squeezing too hard, but you see how he makes a beautiful, a beautiful um, ball, you know. And in but fact, this big small is not told me how. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just gonna say he's the guy, yeah, he's like the this guy. guy uh, yes. 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 You know, pork. pork. Yeah. You know. This is very flexible cooking. Yes. So it's really like what you like. Like, for example, tonight we're doing this dish because we wanted to have a chicken dish, a seafood dish, and a pork dish. So we're using sliced um, white chicken breast, right? Um, but I'll just I'll get to you in one second. But when we went to see the guy, the sumo wrestler, he was using pork belly because he wanted to get like yes. more fat there and more calories. So um, anyway, yeah, it could be whatever you like. Yes, ma'am. It's one of the meaning, but it's the main reason is uh, is like I say before, the father and son eat together, so that's that's what it really means. Chang po, another. No, you don't have to. You can use anything. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a master and the pupil eat together. You know, son and the father eat together. In the same room, same pot. That's chang po means really. In the small, small restaurant house. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I mean, from who? Yeah, uh, for, at least from what we learned, like when we went to this, to the, uh, you know, we ate among the giants. Uh, <laughs> yes, ma'am. It's loose, it gets softer in the finish. It depends on the ingredients. Chicken gets a little soft, but when you use like a, a shrimp, it gets much dense, you know. So you can adjust with li putting little oil or water, liquid, What's into it. What do you like for that? Medium. <laughs> <laughs> you must find your own way. <laughs> We can only open the door. I think you have to but, go uh, down the path. Uh, I think it's a little softer is better. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. And especially shrimp can get really dense, right? Yeah, you know, so, so you, if you're you going to use shrimp, yeah. Okay. <laughs>